Welcome to Old Stuff Show. Today we're at the uh, Aberfoyle Market uh, focusing on uh, sports collectibles. Uh, we have quite a large selection here and uh, what I plan to do is just go through some of the um, highlights and some of the interesting things that are available. So uh, in the past, uh, caps, beer caps, uh, Coke caps, Pepsi caps uh, connected with sports has uh, been popular. I know the Coke collectibles in the 70s where um, there were about 80 of them and there was a shield of uh, a circular shield that uh, was available. Um, this particular one you're looking at here is the uh, caps or caps, beer caps for all of the Stanley Cup winners. Uh, throughout time, and that's kind of interesting. Um, so caps are definitely interesting. The uh, in my display case, we see a few samples of the Coke and Pepsi caps. So on the inside, these uh, we see the players, and uh, so both Pepsi and Coke capitalized on that situation. Of course, throughout time, hockey cards were uh, big, big time, and so depending on the player, like that Tim Horton card would be worth a little more, and also the uh, the age of the card. So if you go back to 1952-53, the Parkhurst, for example, there, uh, Metro Presti, that's a $25 card, and uh, on up through uh, the, the 60s and 70s. 50s, 60s, 70s are definitely uh, the most collectible at this point, although hockey cards do go back to the 1920s. And if you have something uh, in the 20s, I think it was a chocolate bar company, Thompson, that put them out, and uh, they're certainly worth a, a fair amount of money. But again, I have a friend who uh, has a 1953 complete set. The Gordie Howe one there is worth uh, over a thousand dollars, but it would run as a set around, uh, I've seen them sell for around twenty five hundred dollars. So um, the older, the better with hockey cards. Condition obviously is uh, is uh, always important. And that goes through baseball as well. Baseball cards don't seem to be quite as collectible here, but uh, I know again, uh, if you have the right card, like the Mickey Man or Rookie card, uh, was at one point uh, $30,000, and a friend of mine had one found in a box with only about 12 other cards, and uh, sold it quite a number of years ago, but it's gone up considerably in price at that time. Again, players like uh, Gretzky and Howe in hockey, and uh, the uh, you know Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, are always very, very collectible. So, cards, caps. Now, another area that seems to be still highly collectible are these um, hockey coins. The hockey coins were put out by uh, Jello and uh, Sheriff uh, Potato Chips, and uh, they, again, depending on the player, book prices. Uh, could be as high as uh, 10 12 dollars as low as a couple of dollars so uh, they're still very very popular and people are looking to complete their sets these are put out in the in the 60s uh, into the very early 70s the, the expansion uh, NHL expansion coins uh, seem to be very very scarce and hard to get and people are uh, paying premium prices for that type of thing Many companies capitalized on uh, putting out items that would be collectible. Uh, Post cereals, for example. This is a, a complete Post set here of um, NHL players. So uh, they, uh, this this whole set would run about $150, uh, and. Uh, there's uh, quite a, a number of players there. That's a mint mint set, which you don't find. You find individuals items like that sometimes, or groups of them. So, for example, uh, here's the same thing, but in a an individual situation. Well, 
tickets, ticket stubs, always significant. Um, again, depending on the area and the teams, ticket stubs are always very valuable. And certainly if you have something from the 50s or 60s, that uh, commands a pretty good price. So uh, people are out there always looking for that type of thing. Autographs. Autographs are a tricky situation. Uh, there's uh, the question always of authenticity, and you have to be careful uh, to know if you're who you're buying from. And uh, these three that I'm showing you here are definitely original, and I know that because of uh, who I got it from. But uh, there's one over here that's. Uh, uh, grab it here. That's uh, not original. It's a uh, repro uh, print. If that was original, that'd be worth quite a bit of money. Again, people are always uh, looking to collect by team. So if you're a hockey fan and you like Montreal Canadiens, you know, there's a 92-93 uh, picture. Uh, there's uh, uh, team logos. That one is fairly heavy collectible logo and pennants like that one and also pennants like uh, that one there. Now the ones that are felt, made of felt, that's uh, those are the older ones and uh, they are the more expensive ones and they're very hard to get. Cereal companies put out cereal boxes with players on it. There's a Gretzky box. And down here there's a, a Gordie Howe box, um, again, that type of thing uh, is always, always collectible. And another pennant, but that's not as old, 1993, not as worth as much money. Uh, in baseball, I have uh, Blue Jays in the earliest days, and uh, team pictures are always interesting to get, that's the 95 one. Uh, in specialty areas like that one up there, that's a, those are records put out by uh, Esso Gasoline and uh, there was a set of those where players and coaches were talking on the record, the 45 records, and uh, having those is uh, very, very valuable. Tim Horton one is extremely interesting. And on the side beside that, several more pennants, just uh, newer ones. Baseball, hockey, magazines, uh, that one or yearbooks is uh, interesting. And the older the better, of course. And also the, the magazines like Sport Magazine, Sports Illustrated, their first uh, number one Sports Illustrated had actually uh, baseball cards in the center and they, uh, that's a hard one to get and very desirable. Special publications like the Hockey News, again that started in the early 50s and uh, people are always interested in finding that type of thing as well. Uh, every once in a while uh, specialty items come out like the uh, Stanley Cups. When they first came out in the beer, the beer cases, they were extremely sought after. Not so much today, but uh, there's a good selection of them. And uh, pucks, pucks are always uh, looked look after uh, in terms of uh, teams. Sometimes they're autographed. There's a clock that is a, a, a team clock. That's uh, something that some people would like to have. This particular item here, and we'll talk more about that in another video, is uh, interesting. A friend of mine bought the uh, original Chicago Blackhawks scoreboard logo from Maple Leaf Gardens at auction. And uh, that's when Maple Leaf Gardens closed in the, I think, late 90s. Uh, and he has that for sale. So we'll talk more about that another time. Bobbleheads, always people looking for, for bobbleheads sometimes. They're team related if people want them. There's another one right here. 
books, old books like the Foster Hewitt book is uh, interesting. People are looking for something like that, just to look at some nostalgia in the past. Boxing collectibles, I have one here that's uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, it's uh, an autograph, and it's authenticated. And uh, basketball, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt uh, Chamberlain, two uh, big basketball stars from the past, always something people are looking for. And uh, just items that sometimes come out, like the Gretzky figure. Now, the Wayne Gretzky uh, original um, rookie card, uh, which I have, I'll show you sometime later, is a uh, collectible of the day. It's uh, kind of in the, it stayed in the $800 range. And uh, so it's, again, not too hard to get, but something worth, uh, worth having in your collection, of course. And then uh, if I cross over to the other side here, uh, calendars. Calendars are always collectible, especially the uh, Export A in the hockey area from the 1960s. People are certainly looking to, to uh, get something like that. And then autographs, um, again back to autographs, individual player autographs. Uh, they often put these together when they were playing as uh, promos. This is an interesting one here. Um, this is the autograph of the Captain of the Maple Leafs right at the moment. And um, the interesting thing about that was that um, he was uh, playing hockey for the uh, London Knights at the time, and they were, John Tavares was uh, at the local mall signing autographs in the year he was going to be drafted and I uh, got it personally I asked him what team he'd like to play for he said he didn't, he didn't care but I happened to have a Toronto Maple Leaf uh, I didn't have any paper other than a ticket stub I'd been to a Leaf game the night before and he signed that not knowing that someday he would be the captain of the of the Maple Leafs so that's kind of an interesting oddity when you, uh, when you look around and uh, people like to find things like that it's a little different So, let's kind of a look at what I have here in my collection. I uh, should call your attention also a little just before we wrap this up to uh, this type of thing. It's uh, a uh, full poster. Posters are hard to display. And um, this one is uh, Bobby Hall. Um, and I have one of Gordie Howe, not in the greatest condition, but uh, sometimes people like to find posters as well. So there's no end to uh, the kind of collectible that that are out there in terms of uh, sports, but uh, people tend to focus on individual things like cards or coins or pennants, books, photographs, that type of thing. So you usually pick out an area that you're uh, fond of and uh, you try and go around and find as many of the items as you can to fill up, fill up your collection. So we'll be doing more on sports and we'll uh, add to it. I uh, have my personal collection and I also have, uh, I'll bring my friend in who has a, quite a treasure trove of uh, collectibles and all major sports and uh, we'll take a look at that again. So just to finish up, uh, we'll take a, a brief look at some of the specialty items that I have in my special uh, display case in my booth. Uh, we're looking in the center at uh, Detroit Tigers uh, 1961 team autographed authentic original of LK line and teammates uh, and that uh, that's a, a real collectible that uh, some person would love to have. Um, back in the back right there where you see the sport magazine put out uh, when 
Babe Ruth passed away, and uh, this was in uh, 1848. And uh, behind uh, in the package is the uh, newspaper that uh, was put out the next day after he passed away. So a nice little combination of uh, collect collectible there. Uh, we also have the post serial uh, baseball players and football players that were on the uh, the boxes and cut out and some people like to to find those uh, in the back here is a uh, blue jay uh, collector album that has individual uh, players uh, biographies and uh, put out in the earliest days of the blue jays and uh, that's a hard one to find uh, 1985. So every once in a while we find special things that uh, we're happy to share with people. So that's a uh, that's my uh, complete look of uh, the base uh, of the sports collectibles in my booth from baseball, hockey, football, basketball. And if you are ever in the area of Aberfoyle Flea Market, uh, come in and have a look. Booths 38, 39, and 40. Uh, Highway 6 south, uh, north off the 401. Go to Mile. Um, and we'd love to see you come by. It's safe here. You have to wear a mask. Also, uh, check out my eBay site. It's uh, listed on the end at the end of the program in terms of how to find it. So thanks for watching and uh, happy collecting.